You're listening to CFRN, the Christian Financial Radio Network. Good afternoon, traders, and welcome back to the CFRN E-Mini Futures Cast. This is the daily broadcast of Indeterminate Length, where we discuss all things E-Mini, along with some really big ideas on the finer points of trading gold, bonds, crude, sugar, the euro. Joining us today, Mr. Michael Borg. From our trading desk in Chicago, Mr. Burton Schlichter. Now, to get things started, let's go to our host and founder in Studio A, overlooking South Mountain, America's largest city park. Here's Dwayne. Good afternoon. Welcome back. Today is Friday. Friday. Yes, uh, 18th day of March, 2022. Thanks so much for joining us. Whoever you are, wherever you are, however you've joined, we're just glad to have you right here, right now. If you've joined via our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash CFRN, welcome, glad to have you with us. Just know that I'm not able to monitor the question box there because I monitor the question box on our GoTo platform, which I'll tell you how to log into in just a second. I want to point out that not only do we broadcast live every day at 12 noon Eastern, 9 a.m. here on the West Coast, we also archive each and every daily show. And currently, we have over 1,900 daily live broadcasts archived for your educational and viewing pleasure. Now, the other way to log in so that you can actually ask questions and be a part of the discussion, there's a simple registration process that you only have to do one time. Go to our homepage at cfrn.net. On the right-hand side of the page, click the big microphone, follow the instructions. Within 30 seconds, you'll be fully registered, and you'll never have to do it again. And the reason for that is you'll have one-click access to the show each and every day. When it's time for the show to begin, shortly before, you'll get an email. And in the email, there'll be a link. And when you're ready to join, you simply click that link and it just logs you right in. You don't have to type in anything, just click the link, you're in like Flynn. And you have full access to the question box so that you can ask questions and participate in the discussion. So however you choose to join on any given day, maybe some days you're in your office at your desk so you can join via the GoTo platform because you do need to have the software installed, which all happens in that 30-second registration process. Uh, but some days you'll be out of the office, away from your desktop, away from uh, maybe you're on vacation. Maybe you're somewhere on a beach with your toe in the sand. Just point any internet-connected browser to youtube.com slash CFRN. And while you're there, be sure to click the subscribe button so that you're notified every time we go live. And click that little bell as well. Okay? All right, let's open the word of prayer today. I want to pray for our children. I'm real concerned about our children. You know, in the 70s, 80s, uh, there was a real problem with crack cocaine. And a whole lot of grandmothers ended up raising their grandchildren because their mothers and fathers weren't able to. They were hopelessly addicted. And that was a problem. But today we have a much bigger problem. Part of the problem is still addiction. This time it's fentanyl, which is pouring across the border as we speak, 151 people die every single day. Think about that, 150. But 
and that epidemic is worse, far worse, than the crack epidemic. Okay, because everyone's heard the expression crack kills, but by and large, it just made you really weird. Uh, but fentanyl is killing people. Okay, so there's that issue. So again, we have grandparents raising their grandchildren as parents because their parents are either addicted and can't do it or are dead from their addiction and can't do it. So our children are our most, one of the most important things in this world because they are they are the next generation. And one thing we have in the mix now, uh, in the, back in the crack cocaine days, everybody had a Sony Walkman. But kids today have something called a smartphone. And from that smartphone, if you've not taken steps to protect your children, they have access to some of the most horrific Pornography, bestiality, beheadings. And that's just one part of the problem. There's the social media bullying. Uh, teenage suicide is at all-time highs. And part of it is being blamed on the bullying that takes place on social media. It is a problem. And if we as parents and grandparents don't address it, who will? Proverbs 22.6 says, Train up a child in the way he should go. When he is old, he will not depart from it. That scripture right there caused me a lot of doubt in my faith uh, in my wild years. I grew up Christian home. Uh, and then my wife and I sowed our wild oats for a couple decades. And eventually we returned to the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and my grandmother. And things have been pretty doggone good since, uh, all things considered. But I knew that my mom and my grandmother, my, my grandmother was really the primary influence uh, when it came to God, she had a second grade education. She was uh, taken out of school in the second grade to go pick cotton in the fields. Uh, yes, white people picked cotton as well as other colored people, people of other color. Uh, to my knowledge, the only, Bible, the only book she ever read was the Bible. Oh, nope. Uh, we belonged to the Church of God. There's a couple of big denominations called the Church of God. Uh, this one's out of Cleveland, Tennessee, is where the home office is. They would send out a little magazine every month. She would read that. She would read the Bible. I never, saw, I, I never saw her read anything other than those two things. And she read her Bible every day. I have her Bible. Every, every, line, every verse that she underlined, I have that. It's so precious. So, but it bothered me because I knew that I had been raised up in the way that I should go. And here I was out acting a fool for a couple decades. It was only after I had my earth-shaking moment and my wife and I turned our lives back towards God, that I was reading my Bible, and I read the scripture, and I understood something that I had not ever under, really understood before. It says, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. So here I was, 37 years old, and I guess I'm officially old because I had returned to the way that I should go. 
Now, in my understanding, raising kids with an intentional lack of guidance, which is quite popular today. I have uh, family members by marriage uh, who uh, have a parenting style that's it's like free-range parenting. These are children, not chickens. Uh, it, and you probably know someone yourself who has a, well, whatever makes my child happy kind of mentality. This causes more harm to them than good. Children need guidance from their parents. They are young and do not yet fully understand the world around them. And this free range style of parenting is honestly quite harmful to the psyche of a child. Again, they're children, not chickens. Parents and grandparents, we should not be afraid to lovingly yet firmly set boundaries and tell our kids no and why, especially if we know it may become harmful or damaging to them now or even later in life. Small habits become behaviors and behaviors become lifestyles. Now, they may be frustrated at you for a minute, but honestly, it's the most loving thing a parent can do. I truly believe your child will thank you for it when they get older. We are raising the next generation. And the next round of senators and presidents and the next generation. So what do we want our world to look like as our children grow up? It is our job as parents to teach and guide our children and protect them the best we can. Now, I'm not suggesting that we be helicopter parents. I think that's harmful as well. But I know I most definitely cannot do this without God's grace and wisdom. Learning from what he has to say about parenting has been so much better than all the world's advice could offer me. Uh, what's that one famous book that was written about raising a child? The title escapes me at the moment. But it, Dr. Spock. Dr. Spock. I'm trying to think of the name of the book now. Maybe it'll come to me. It was about how to raise a child. And he was a man who never <laughs> had a child. Learning from God what he has to say about parenting is the best possible way to learn how to raise your child. The book of Proverbs is full of wisdom. And I've already shared with you the verse from chapter 22. Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he's old, he won't depart from it. Doesn't mean he won't go crazy for a few years once he turns 18 and whatnot. But... You've planted the seed, and if he lives long enough or she, it'll take root. Early training secures lifelong habits. Parents must be diligent to guide their children, teaching them God's word and enforcing it with loving discipline, raising their children to fear the Lord. And we talked about this the other day. That doesn't mean to be scared. It means to respect. The world is ready and willing to discipline your child, especially when they are young and impressionable. It's far better that they are disciplined by you as the parent instead. It is loving to give your children boundaries and rules to follow, which will help shape their independence so they can make good decisions while they are still young. You are not alone in your parenting journey. There will be hard days, and simple, strife-free days. May the Lord give you wisdom so that you can steward the lives that He has entrusted to you. Heavenly Father, I know that you do not want children to raise themselves. You have given children their parents to train them in good, godly habits that will help shape them as adults. Most importantly, Help me, 
help all of us to teach them more about you and the gospel. My hope is that they will long to love you and live for you all the days of their life, spreading your truth and your love to the world and raising up the next godly generation. We lean on your grace and ask for your wisdom every day. Thank you for guiding us and caring for us as your child. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, happy Friday, guys. Hope it's a happy Friday for you, wherever you are, wherever you are. Let me give you the numbers from around the world. We'll start here in the U.S. with the cash markets, or the indices as they're called. Dow's currently down 54 points. The NASDAQ's up 135 points, 136 points, 1 percent. S&P 500's up 12 and a half. The Russell 2000, our man in the street, is down three and a half. So we're back to that split market situation. We like to see all four of the major indices the same color, either all four red or all four green. That creates some of the best trading opportunities. But it is what it is. We got two in the red, two in the green. And the commodity basket, crude oil up a dollar ninety-eight. No, nope, I'm sorry, a dollar eighteen. Trading make that a dollar twenty-two. Trading one oh four twenty last. That's a gain of a little over one percent. Gold's down eleven bucks, trading nineteen thirty-two ten last. Silver is down 44 cents, trading 25.17 last. That's almost $2,500 per futures contract traded. In the Asian markets, the close. Nikkei posted a gain of 174 points. The Shanghai gained 36 points, which for the Shanghai is a little over 1%, and the Hang Seng fell 88 points. And in the European markets at the close, quiet trade. FTSE posted a gain of eight points. The DAX fell just 26, and the CAC down five and a half. So that gives us a mixed day in Asia, mixed day in the UK. And so far, it is a mixed Radio Friday here in the US of A. So with that, we'll go to Michael and get a recap of Everything that happened in the live training room this morning, I'll come back. We'll talk about the logic alerts, the concierge alerts, the current volatility, and it appears that we have some slowing volatility. Uh, but the jury's still out. Michael, I can see your charts. Okay. So if you're ready, you can take it away. All right, here we go then. Um, all right, good afternoon, everyone. Today is Friday, the 18th day of March 2022. <clears throat> now, if you've not taken a free trial with us, go here to eminitrainingschool.com. On this page, all that we ask for is your name, your email, and your phone number. You can tell us the biggest trading challenge, so we can tailor 101 training just for you. Hit the send button, you'll be sent a confirmation link. You must click on that confirmation link, okay? If you don't click that link, we don't know that you took a free trial, so you got to make sure you click on that link. All right? All right. Okay, spreadsheet. Now, we were back and forth in gold today all day. Well, mostly back. <laughs> Trying to go forth in gold. We ended up back. But anyway, if you're going to read the spreadsheet, you got to read all the CFTC risk disclosures down at the bottom. Today is the 18th day of March, 2022. We made 22 ticks in crude. We lost six in gold. We ended up, we started out with three stop outs in a row in gold and we got positive and then we stopped out one more time right at the end and ended negative. Um, but we made up for it with the ES. We're up 94 ticks on the ES. That put us at plus $1,335 a contract on the morning session today. Today it took four minutes in one trade to get the goal for the day. At that point it was up $100 a contract and I took a total of 33 trades this morning. 
So on the month, I'm at $22,530. That's for 14 trading days, averaging $1,609 per contract per two hour trading day. We've now gone 115 days since our last down day. And um, we've gotten our goal for the day on 53 out of 53 days so far this year. Um, hold on, let me scroll up here. Yeah, 53 out of 53 days so far this year. So on the year now, we're at $58,293 a contract. Averaging, we just got under $1,100 a contract. Averaging $1,099.88 per contract. Um, I got to get the monthly average back up over 1700 or no, 1650 I think, to get that back over 1100 Anyway, um, that, uh, that's not the monthly average. That's the daily average. This is the monthly um, that was over 53 days, and so we're averaging $1,099 per contract per two-hour trading day. Um, if you were to quit when you got your goal for the day and you were to add one contract per month, you now would have worked a total of 8.28 hours this year. So far in the year, we're 53 days in, you would have worked 8.28 hours. So divide, what is it, 8.28, let's, let's just do this, clear. 8.28 that's hours that's, so it's 60 minutes and divide that by 53 days so we're averaging 9.37 minutes per day that's what it comes down to um <clears throat> anyway that's what we would be and you would be averaging uh 1664 dollars um per hour okay $1,664 per hour. Um, all right, let's get into what we did and didn't do. I had quite a few trades on all of them. So we'll just start out with gold. Okay, gold was our nemesis today. It would be see my last trade was a stop out. Um, let's see, we'll get into it right in here. Now I missed this stuff right here right at the very beginning. Would've been great to get that. Would've gotten the gold for the day and then would've been positive on gold probably the rest of the day. But I missed those couple of nice trades over there. Um, then I missed this one and this one and this one. And then the first trade I took, I stopped out minus eight. The next trade I took, I stopped out minus 16. And the next trade I took, I stopped out minus 24. Okay, but I didn't give up. <laughs> I picked up two ticks there that put me at minus 23. Picked up 13 ticks there that put me at minus nine. Picked up two more ticks there to put me at minus seven. Picked up six ticks there to put me at minus one. Missed a couple of trades. Well, a few trades. One, two, um, three. Three nice trades I missed. Um, there were a couple other trades in here. This would have been a break even trade had I taken it. This would have probably been a stop out had I taken it. No, it would have been a break even. It was from right there had I taken it. Um, there's a trade right here that I missed. Would have been a profitable trade, a trade right there that would have been profitable, uh, a trade right here that would have been profitable. But anyway, the next one I took was over here. I picked up three ticks and that put me at plus two. So I'm thinking, yay, I'm positive. And we're positive before the end of the day. It was about quarter after 12, I mean, quarter after 11. And then I stopped out on the very next trade. Now, I should have bumped my stop to break even, but I wasn't fast enough. And it stopped me out, minus eight ticks, and then it went in the direction I thought it was going to go. Almost got up to the level that I thought it was going to get to, and then it pulled back. So we were minus six right there, and that's how we ended the morning session. Now, during the break, just the highest probability trades. There's one right here. Took forever. Probably a break even. Um, what was this one? Yeah, there was one right here that would have worked out. And that was it. Just two during the break. Okay. And now crude oil. Now crude's doing a head and shoulder pattern. That's what I was saying all morning. See, if you look at it, this is a 30 minute chart. If it broke down below the neckline right here, and if it does by the end of the day, this is gonna be a huge move down, okay? If that happens. But well, here's a shoulder, here's a head, here's the other shoulder. Now we're not really pattern traders. I mean, we are totally pattern traders, but not this type of pattern trader. Um, Um, when we got into it here, 
you know, crude was pretty good most of the day. It did have some really active periods where the spread started to get out of control. But um, most of the time it was all right. It was manageable. Now, we had a few minutes this morning. Um, well, I don't know. Was this our first trade? No, we got our goal for the day on the ES. This was our first trade on crude. We picked up 10 takes right here. We missed this one. We missed this one right here. We picked up this one. We missed that one, that one. We grabbed this one for 10 takes. Then uh, we missed that one right in there. Looks like there was a little, oh, there wasn't. I'm sorry. Um, there was a short right there we missed. Long in there. A short down there. Then we got a few of them here. We had a break even, a break even, and a plus five right there. Then we missed a couple in here, a couple of nice long trades in there. Um, I guess that was a short. We didn't really have a very big step three right there, but you could have taken that, I guess. Um, picked up a couple of ticks there to get us to plus 17, then plus 10 to get us to 27, then plus seven to get us to 34. Then we had this huge trade right here that went all the way down there and came back up. I got a break even on. And then I stopped out on the next one, put me down to 26. Um, missed that long, missed that long. There was a short right in here and right here. I missed both of those. And this is all before 10.30, or actually before 11. Okay, we ended up with another break-even trade there. Then we stopped out again. So we went from 26 down to 18. And let's see, this is again toward the end of the session. There was a... Highest probability trade right there I missed. And highest probability trade right here that I missed. Okay, well, this is getting into the break. Somewhere in there, we picked up four more ticks because we got to plus 22. So after the stop out, we went from um, 18 to plus 22. So there was a four tick trade in here somewhere. And I don't know where that was. It. It could have been anywhere right in here, I think. Um, anyway, after that, we get into the break and just the highest probability trades. It was one here, one here, one here. That was just about one right there. Um, one, no, not really, not really right there. Not really. One here. And that was it. So there were some nice highest probability trades during the break. Well, four or five of them. Every one of them that was an actual highest probability trade did work out. To some degree, nothing stopped out. Um, and now we get to the ES. The ES is where we made the money today. Now it started out <clears throat> after stopping out three times in a row on, on uh, on gold we started out right here this was our first trade of the day we picked up eight ticks on this es trade then we stopped out on the very next trade so we're back to zero then in the meantime in here we're starting to stop outs with the gold we're down two on gold i think at this point this trade right here we picked up 32 ticks on the es we went from zero to 32 then we had a two tick trade i think that was a break even and a break even and a break even, and it was a two tick trade. We got to 32, and then a four tick trade, got to 36, and then another four tick trade, got to 40. Then look at this trade, it went all the way up there, all the way back down here for a break even. Um, break even there, we went from 40 to 46, I think, right here, and then another break even, and then we went from 46 to 62, so right in here somewhere, it was a good trade. 46 to 62, then 62 to 78. So there were two 16 trades, right? 16 tick trades, right, in a row there and there. Okay, and then went from 78 to 80. So we had a two tick trade there. And then went from 80, break even, and 80 to 94 right there. And that was, I think, our last trade of the morning on the ES. So we got most of the trades on the ES, and we ended up with plus 94 ticks. Now, during the break, only the highest probability trades, one right there. Um, one right here. Hmm. 
one right here. This would have been a break even. Um, one right here. This would have stopped you out. Okay, so that was our morning with the ES. We ended up with plus 94 ticks. Granted, uh, 64 ticks of that was in three trades. Okay, so the other 30 ticks was in a whole bunch of trades. But we did do okay with the ES. ES was, it was running well today, and it was nice and volatile. Not too much, just enough. Um, and it was going where it, where it was suggesting it was going to. Most of the time, it would get there pretty quick, too. Um, but anyway, if you're going to read the spreadsheet, you got to read all the CFTC risk disclosures down at the bottom. Today's the 18th day of March 2022. Today, 22 ticks in crude, minus 6 in gold, and plus 94 on the ES. Put us at $1,335 a contract this morning. Today, it took 4 minutes and 1 trade to get to the goal for the day. At that point, we were up $100 a contract, and we took a total of 33 trades. So on the month now, we're $22,530 a contract. That's over 14 trading days, averaging $1,609 per contract per two-hour trading day. We've gone 115 days since our last down day, and we have gotten our goal on 53 out of 53 days so far this year. We're now at $58,293 on the year. It's averaging $1,099 per contract per two-hour trading day on the year. Um, <clears throat> If you were to quit when you got your goal for the day, you now would have worked a total of 8.28 hours this year. Okay, you would be averaging $1,664 an hour. Okay, 1664 an hour. And if you've not taken a free trial with us, go to eminitrainingschool.com. On this page, all that we ask for is your first name, your email, and your phone number. You can tell us the biggest training challenge so we can tell our own training just for you. All right, hit the send button, you'll be sent a confirmation link. You must click on that confirmation link, all right? If you don't click the link, we don't know that you took the free trial, so you got to make sure you click on that link, all right? All right. And with that, we can pass it back out to fabulous Phoenix, Arizona, in Studio A, overlooking the South Mountain, America's largest city park. Dwayne, if you are ready. I am. Excellent. Now, guys, Michael just showed you a lot. <clears throat> even taught you some stuff but there's an important lesson in what you just saw and heard that some of you might have missed and hi guys would you shoot me a link to get back into the room jeff asked uh valerie can you do that um i can i can send it off to him okay but, correct me if I'm wrong, but you said that you got stopped out three times in a row. I certainly did. Yes, it was, it was ugly. I mean, it happened, but those things happen. And, and you just have to keep and, and you kept trading. I kept trading, absolutely. Okay, um, here's the lesson, guys. Until you're able to do that. You'll never become a consistently profitable trader who trades for a living. If that's your goal, if that's your dream, if that's your heart's desire, okay? When you have a goal for the day, okay? Now, there may be times to walk away from the desk, take a walk around the block, walk the dog, make a sandwich, shampoo your hair, whatever. Uh, but... We all know how gut wrenching it is in the beginning when you get stomped out. But you got to get to the point where it just rolls off your back, you know, like water off a duck's back, whatever. Uh, you you can't just throw in the towel on that you're down. You get stopped out three times. Uh, it doesn't now. If you're new, okay, you should be trading in your simulator anyway. So, absolutely, you should keep trading because there's no money on the line. Not real money. Uh, if you've qualified to go live and are now trading live, okay, you should only be trading at one contract. Uh, and so, if you get stopped out three times in a row, trading with Michael in the room, uh, using a two-point stop loss, 
Okay, so you're down 300 bucks. Okay. Uh, you can't let that rattle your cage. You can't let that. I mean, there's obstacles. Uh, three stop outs in a number one. We know in trading that you will get stopped out. There is no holy grail, crystal ball. No guru, no secret, no indicator, no oscillator, no formula, no algorithm that can prevent you from ever being stopped out. You've got to learn to get stopped out and realize that that's just part of the business. It's as much a part of trading as breathing is a part of life. Uh, it's how you handle it, how you deal with it. Now, if you're brand new uh, and if... $300 represents a significant amount of your account size. Uh, you've got access to the Telegram channel. There's somebody that can talk with you, work with you, counsel with you. You can call Valerie. You can call uh, Michael gives you his phone number all the time. You can message me in Telegram. You can show me what you can show me your three trades. I can try to help you understand what happened, but. The most important lesson you just learned from this morning's recap of the live training room is that after three stopouts, Michael kept trading. And you go, well, yeah, but that's, 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 that's Michael, and he's a master trader. And, he, you know, well, how do you think he got there? By stopping after he got stopped out a couple times? No. Okay. Recap of the recap. Uh, today it took four minutes and one trade to get to one hundred. I mean, yeah, one hundred dollars a contract. That is right. There we go. Okay. All right. With that said, and by the way, good job. Thank you. I didn't say Thank that. Uh, let me update you all on where we stand so far this week. With logic 247 and there may be some there just may be some alerts this afternoon we'll see hang on a second I'm trying to get this thing formatted for this screen because it has a different resolution than Valerie's screen who does the recaps? So, all right. Mission accomplished. Okay. All right. We are in week 189. We've issued almost 10,000. I think we're like 40 alerts away from hitting the 10,000 mark. This week, because of the in in incredible volatility, there just weren't that many opportunities where you could put on a trade and use the maximum risk that we recommend of $300, $300 per contract per trade. Now that's the maximum. Less when possible using market structure and the simple three-step process we teach all of our traders. Over 189 weeks, we've averaged 20% of the alerts getting stopped out based on that risk profile. This week, we're 25%. First couple of days of the week, we didn't have anything stopped out. But we issued a total of 18 alerts. A typical week is 50, 50 to 60. The most we ever issued in a week, I think, was right at 100. I think it might have been exactly 100. Because market conditions supported that. Of the 18, one never triggered. We're all caught up. We had 16 actionable alerts. And 4 or 25% were stopped out based on that risk profile. Now, I mentioned that it looks to me, I, I said this in the workshop last night, the charts are starting to look more normal. So I think, I hope, I really hope this coming week that we're going to see a return to the normal flow of alerts. Okay. Now, I hold back on alerts because, again, we don't want to risk on a logic or a concierge alert 
more than $300 per contract per trade, but less when possible. Lots of times I get in a mentoring session. Okay, so I've been trying to follow the alerts and my $300 stop always gets stopped out. Oh, you always use a $300 stop? Well, yeah, isn't that what you said? No, <laughs> it's what I don't say every day. It's 300 or less based on market structure. Okay, so now the difference between the logic alerts and our original alert service, the concierge trade alerts, is a couple. Number one, this comes out as a static report shortly after the Globex open, and it's based on historic price action. The logic alerts are based on current price action and come out under normal conditions around the clock as opportunity presents itself. Those 10, almost 10,000 alerts that are in the alert channel but that's in the, once the week's over, that's all in the public domain, okay? So you can mine through that data. You can learn all kinds of things. You'll see weeks where we had like 3% stopped out. I don't know if we've, I don't think we ever had a week where 0% stopped out, but we had plenty of weeks where there was three and five. And, and when I say that on average, 20% gets stopped out, I'm being really, really, conservative and generous with that. So anyway, each of the markets that come out with this report have two numbers. In case of the S&P, the long side was 44.10. So if you trade the S&P, you should draw a line in the sand at 44.10. And you should draw a line in the sand at 43.62. You probably don't trade all of these markets, okay? Whatever markets you do trade, once this report posts, go to the chart, the 30-minute chart of the market you trade, markets, whatever, and make note of where price is at that point. Because going forward, after the report's posted, if price starts trending up towards 44.10, that's bullish, our strategy is going to look for opportunities to be long the market. That's where you'll use logic and everything you learn in the live training room to find opportunities to be long the market. On the other hand, if price starts trending down towards 43.62, our strategy will look for opportunities to be short the market, and that's where you'll use logic and everything you learn in the live training room to yourself find opportunities to be short the market. So if you want a screenshot, because we're going to walk through each chart, it's not going to take long because we've had a kind of a quiet session. So if you want to grab a screenshot, there it is. Okay. All right. So we'll pull this out of the way. Just a couple of headlines that I'm going to mention before we go to the daily chart. There was a startup called WeWork. Some of you may have never heard of it because it never actually went public. It tried to go public, and that's when uh, it went to heck in a handcart, okay? But it's a very compelling story. And a new series, TV series, about WeWork premieres today on Apple TV called We Crashed. Now, you can go... To Apple Podcasts, there's a complete series there called We Work. That was the name of the company, the startup. And they they had, I forget what they were valued at, uh, how many billions of dollars. Basically, it was shared office space. And you may be familiar with that if you live in a major metropolitan city. Um, office space is expensive. So one guy... <coughs> leases like a whole floor of a building and sets up desks and cubicles and whatnot. And so you've got 50 people working on this floor and each one of them paying, you know, a portion of the rent. And so this guy, uh, <clears throat> Adam Newman, who was the founder, 
and who landed billions of dollars in investments from firms like Goldman Sachs and SoftBank. Uh, he was a very controversial tech figure, famous for throwing alcohol-fueled company retreats, jetting around in private planes, and instituting a meat ban at WeWork's corporate offices. Now, all the different cities around the country where he set up these WeWork centers, it was the coolest of the cool. If you were a cool startup, and not only did it allow people to have an office who couldn't afford, you know, to lease out an entire office for their startup or for their business, whatever it might be, but you're in your cubicle working on your project, your business, whatever it is, and two cubicles, two cubicles down is a graphic designer, you know, and two cubicles the other way uh, is a guy that writes code. I mean, it brought all of these resources together under one roof, and it was, well, I just encourage you, if you don't have Apple TV, if you can't, you could probably get a free trial. Uh, but this is a series, not a movie. I think everyone could learn something about business by either listening to the podcast series, which is like 10 episodes uh, on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get podcasts. It's been out for a while. It's called We Work. That was the name of the company. But the TV show that's going to premiere uh, tonight is called We Crashed because they did in a big way. Amazon has officially bought MGM. Yesterday, we talked about the fact that Europe had signed off on it. Now the U.S., without any challenges from the FTC, has allowed Amazon to buy MGM. And as kids, we all went to the movies and we all saw Metro Goldwyn Mayer on the screen and we saw the, Ryan, the lion roar. Amazon bought MGM and their entire library for only $8.5 billion. That seems like a very low price to me considering Uber's valued at like 60 or 80 billion. But I mean, for 8.5 billion, Jeff Bezos got the studio behind James Bond, Rocky, The Handmaid's Tale, and so many other iconic shows and movies that we could spend the whole show talking about, but we won't. Uh, Elon Musk thinks people will land on Mars in 2029. In the past, he said 2024, then he upped it to 2026, and now he's bumped it to 2029. The average Apple employee earns 200000 a year. Tesla rival Lucid says, remember, Tesla has already raised their basic model, the price, they raised it $10,000. Uh, Lucid has said they're going to have to do the same thing. Now, virtual reality slash the metaverse, you might have heard that term, could help ward off Alzheimer's. Researchers at a South by Southwest panel suggested the tech could trigger old memories or help people recall a family member's voice and reduce loneliness, which is a key risk factor for Alzheimer's. So if you have a loved one, a family member, you know, maybe their spouse has passed and the children are all gone and they spend a lot of time alone, uh, Try to do something about that. Now, we're all, some of us are genetically de predisposed to Alzheimer's. Uh, but some of what causes Alzheimer's is environmental. And loneliness is a huge part of it. So, if you can help someone, please do. All right, um, that's it for 
any tech news. Uh, it looks like daylight savings time is going to become permanent. The Senate passed it uh, with there was there was not a nay in the House. Everyone agreed, but now it's going to the House, and I assume if the Senate already approved it, you know, 100 percent. The House is going to do the same, then it just needs the President's signature. And so this fall, we probably won't be turning our clocks back. So The House has passed a bill that would suspend normal trade relations with Russia. The bill passed 424 to 8. Putin has threatened to rid Russia of traders who oppose the Ukraine war. 35 companies have agreed to produce generic Pfizer COVID pill versions. Moderna has asked the FDA to approve second COVID booster for all adults. Kaching, if you own stock in Moderna. North Carolina investigates Mark Meadows for potential voter fraud. Now, what did he do? The New Yorker reported earlier this month that Meadows and his wife registered to vote a few weeks before the 2020 election using an address for a mobile home in rural Macon County that they rented that year but rarely if ever visited. The mobile home now has a new owner and the former landlord said she doesn't think Mark Meadows ever even set foot in the place, much less resided there. We got a war going on. People are dying. People are cold. They're hungry. They're starving. And and this is what our Justice Department's focused on. That this guy rented a trailer so he could cast one vote for whoever he voted for. I don't know. Uh, good news, I suppose. The number of Americans applying for unemployment benefits fell by 15,000 to 214,000 last week, and a sign that layoffs are continuing to drop as the job market bounces back from disruption by the coronavirus pandemic. The less volatile four-week average of new claims dropped to 20, 223,000 from 231,000 a week earlier, a 50-year low of 1,000 419,000 Americans were receiving unemployment aid in the week that ended, March 5th. That's a decline of 71,000 people. Now, that doesn't mean those people got jobs. It just means 71,000 of them aren't going to get a check. The federal government reported in early March that U.S. employers added 678,000 jobs in February, the most since July of last year. The unemployment rate fell to 3.8% from 4% in January. And this is just unbelievable. The National Transportation Safety Board said Thursday a 13-year-old was driving the pickup truck that struck a van in West Texas, killing nine people, including six members of the University of the Southwest golf teams and their coach. The young teen and an adult who was riding in the truck also died. National Transportation Safety Board Chairman Bruce Landsberg said the truck's left front tire, which was a spare, blew out, and the pickup crossed into the oncoming lane of the darkened two-lane highway. He hit the van, which was returning to New Mexico from a competition in Texas. Both vehicles burst into flames after what was clearly a high-speed collision. How sad. It's sad that someone would put a 13-year-old behind the wheel. Uh, I mean, I was driving at 13, but not... My grandfather would take me way out in the country on a dirt road where there was nobody and no cars for probably 10 miles in any direction and started teaching me how to drive. Because in Georgia at that time, at 15, you got your learner's permit, and at 16, you got your driver's license. Uh, so, our hearts and prayers are with all these folks and their families. 
nine people. What a shame. Uh, and Moscow, on Thursday, extended the, ten the detention of professional basketball star Brittany Griner by two months until May 19th. Griner was arrested in Russia last month at the Moscow airport on drug charges. She plays for the Phoenix... Uh, I forget what they call them. The Phoenix Suns. They got, they got another name. But anyway, <clears throat> she's accused of possessing cannabis vape cartridges in her luggage, which are legal in most states here in the U.S. Uh, at this point. Griner was reportedly arrested on February 17th, but her detention wasn't reported until three weeks later. Now, that, that part's wrong. A U.S. citizen detained for three weeks before the U.S. is notified. I guess she was traveling alone. She appeared in court Thursday and pleaded not guilty. Now, I don't know why she's pleading not guilty. It, well, maybe, maybe the vape cartridges, maybe she doesn't smoke weed. It's legal here in Arizona, where she works. Uh, it was her first public appearance since her arrest, although Russian state media released a mugshot taken after she was detained three weeks after. Representative Colin Alry, Democrat from Texas, a former athlete who, like Greiner, played for Baylor University, has been working to secure her release. He recently expressed concern that the U.S. Embassy has been denied consular access to her. Now, that breaks all kind of international laws. So, but we are talking about the people that invaded Ukraine, so. What are you going to do? All right. S&P 500 E-mini futures daily chart. All-time historic intraday high, January 4th. We talked last night in the workshop about how yesterday the high was 4406.75. The high we needed to take out was this one, 4410 and a half. We've done it. So now the next resistance overhead is the 50% reverse fib. We get through the 50% reverse fib. We've got a bearish cross right there. Okay. So let me highlight that. I'll make it skinny so nobody mistakes it for a window of opportunity. There. Potential resistance on the way to the 62% reverse fib. Now, getting through the 38 is a big deal because back here, we tried, well, we tried on this day and this day, which sent us lower. And then we tried for one, two, three, four, five. Five sessions to get through the 38. We got through on this day, but then we closed back below it. And that sent us lower. So that obstacle has been overcome. This high, as long as we close above this high today, fair to close above this high today, that would be very bearish. It, Looking at the chart, I mean, we're, we're moving higher as I speak. So keep in mind, 44... 47 as potential resistance. That's the 50% reverse fib from the high put in January 4th to the low put in February 24th. It may take a couple sessions to get through there. We could consolidate there for a while. We could get turned down. We could get turned away. Uh, and then possibly come back to the VBC, find support, and continue higher. Once we get through that 50% reverse fib, then we got to deal with this bearish cross. And then the 62. If we get through the 62, we got a little window of opportunity here. And then we want to get well above these highs 
I want, I want to get above that high right there. And that gives us this window of opportunity. And then we have another window here. And then if we take out these two highs, and eventually we will, because the indices always go higher over time. That's how they were created. The S&P has 500 large cap companies, best of breed, but when one of them falls on hard times, misses their numbers, etc., they get asked to leave, and they're replaced with a fresh, healthy, strong, bullish company. So because of the way the indices are created, over the long haul, they're always going to go higher. <clears throat> this is such a minor in the grand scheme of things. <coughs> such a minor down. This was just a, we had a deep pullback. Okay. Uh, let me try to put that in perspective. not what I was looking for. This is what I was looking for. This morning when I posted uh, in the Telegram channel, this is uh, the 4181 tick chart we looked at it last night in the uh, workshop. This 4403, I said, could be potential support, and sure enough, we spiked it down to 4401, uh, and then we made the run. Broke that trend line, came back down, found support at 4400. Now we've gotten back above the BBC. Had a leg and a retracement, and here we go. Now price is directly, uh, or the, our blue and climbing is directly above price, and so we may see a pullback here. The BBC, a pullback to the BBC would almost line up with these highs right here. Maybe we spike the BBC just a little bit. Okay, it's a counter trend trade, but that's not why I even brought this chart up. I brought this chart up to do this. I want to change this to add ES so we can get as much data as possible. And then I want to put this on a monthly chart. Okay, so we're, this, this is giving me data all the way back to 2012. Look at how little time we spent below the BBC on the monthly chart. This time, this downtrend that we're in, that we're trying to come out of. Now, I did pull up the monthly chart two weeks ago, and I showed you guys this. I said, or last month, I said we we just pulled back to the BVC and bounced. We came back down and tested the BVC area again, and now we're bouncing. Overhead on the monthly chart, we've got the step line. Blue and climbing, and that all-time historic intraday high. Okay? So, this downtrend we've been in this year, there's, Jan there's January, February, March. In the grand scheme of things, not such a big deal. Okay? On a weekly... We're pulling up to the BBC from below. Now, this is where it could get interesting, okay? As you can see, the pullback held, and the pullback held, the pullback held, the pullback held, the pullback held, and it held, and it held, until it finally didn't hold, okay? We know that on 30-minute time frame and above, the pullback holds more often than it doesn't, okay? But we know eventually it's not going to hold. 
and we're going to get this situation. So we're going to get a bearish cross. Price pulls away. Price pulls back. We already had a pull away and a pullback. This pullback held. Just like all these bullish pullbacks held. Okay. This bearish pullback held. And so, again, now I'm using add ES, which is the continuous contract. So that, that price is, price is going to be just a tiny bit off from what the current contract is. We're in the M contract, June. For this rally to be real. In fact, for a second, so we compare apples to apples. Let's go at ES. Okay. For this, for this to be real, we're going to need this chart to move. Come on. Okay, maybe I can pull it from here. There we go. We need this pullback to not hold. This pull up. Okay. First one held. And of course, just above is a bearish cross. But this number on the add ES. see if I can forty four fifty two okay forty four fifty two is right there. So basically, this pullback, okay, is roughly at the 50% reverse fib area. And it's based on the pullback not holding. And then, of course, there's obstacles. The bearish cross, these two double tops here, and then we got some room to run up to here. That's the top, okay? So, hopefully that puts in perspective that this bearish downtrend that we've been in, in the grand scheme of things, has not even taken us below the BBC on the monthly. But it has on the weekly. So be real cautious in this area. Okay. All right. Let's keep moving. CTA numbers that I showed you just a moment ago that you took a screenshot of if you wanted to. The long on the ES was 44.10. Uh, the first trigger took us up to 44.16. So the market made six points available, $50 a point, $300 per contract traded. And then last night, we joined this little window of opportunity, I think during the workshop. So we hit the bottom of the window, backed off, came down to the zone. The zone held as support. Remember, whenever price drops to the weekly trading zone, we expect the weekly trading zone to hold as support. So it held and it held. So we got a double bottom here. Okay. Six points, $50 a point, $300 per contract traded. And then we get back below the trigger. Remember, once an alert triggers, there's a greater probability of it triggering multiple times than not triggering multiple times. And so on the next trigger, we make it up to 44.14. 
four points, $50 a point, $200 per contract traded. Then we got back below the trigger, and we ran up to 44.17, so seven points, $50 a point. And then back below the trigger, and a run up to 44.28 and a half, so 18 points. One, two, three, four. Beautiful opportunities at the CTA long. And the window field. Okay. On the Dow. We're just about to trigger the CTA long. The vertical line separates today, Friday, from yesterday, Thursday. Yesterday, price found support at the previous bullish cross. I know I went over that yesterday. Just point it out to you again. It's just such a reliable thing to know and have once you are a passport holder and have our indicators. Okay, so we pull back to the BBC, we got a bounce, then we got below, we got above, and we pull back to the BBC and it held and here we go and we're making a run. So not much more to say about that on the Russell. On the Russell, we drew this one of opportunity, I believe, in the workshop last night. And the first trip up, we made it halfway through. Now, I'm going to say that is typical with windows of opportunity. The first push will usually take you about halfway through the window. Good place to take your profit. And then we came back to the window, but, you know, it is what it is. And then over here, when we triggered the window, we made the run, but we still haven't triggered the CTA long. This is where we opened. We came down to the BBC, found support, bounced. This looks an awful lot like the S&P in the Dow. Got below. And then we spiked <coughs> or sliced through the zone. We not only pull back to the zone, we pull back to the BBC, the pullback held. And that brings us to where we are now. High of the session for the Russells, 2073.30. Triggers at 2075. Okay, NQ. The NAS. The first trigger from 145 took us up to 152. Seven points, $20 a point, $140 per contract traded is what the market made available. And then we got back below the trigger, put in a high, put 245, that's 100 points, $20 a point. $2,000 per contract available in that one 30-minute candle. So if, if, if you've only earned the right to trade one contract, if you are in the right place at the right time, and that's the whole point of the alerts is to help you know where the right place is, uh, I can't. I don't have the skill set to give you the right time, okay? Because these alerts went out last night at 7.25 p.m. Eastern, okay? And then we got this one last trigger. We dip back below the, we dip back below. And from 145, we've made it up to 316. Let's call it 150 points, let's call it $3,000 per contract traded. Now it's more than that. Let me just give you the real number. Uh, 316. Minus 145. So 
171 points at $20 a point, $3,420 per contract traded. This one, 245 minus 145, that's a, yeah, it's two grand. So this was a $2,000 move, and so far this has been a $3,420 per contract move. And you'll notice that the entire time, the step line has stayed on the left side of blue and climbing. It's in the process of crossing, okay? Now, we've still got another weekly zone overhead. So this may not be over. And it looks like we may not get that cross right here where the step line crosses over to the right side of blue and climbing. So if we take out this high, we have plenty of room to run. I'm, I'm not forecasting that we're going to run all the way to the highest weekly zone. I'm just saying there's plenty of room on the upside if we take out the high of this candle. Now on your smaller time frame, this might be a situation. Currently, we're at 14,301. So there's 15 points to the high of that candle. So based on your smaller time frame, whatever chart that you actually execute on and use to set your stop with using market structure, a 15-point move at $20 a point, that would be $300. We could probably just sit here and watch it happen. But we got to keep going. Crude oil, we rolled the K contract. Here's the open last night. We headed down towards the zone, but there was a lot of buying pressure. We didn't make it all the way to the zone. We triggered. And, well, just this initial run. From 102.95 up to 104.21. So let's just call it 103 to 104.20. That's that's a $1,200 per contract move from the trigger to this high. And then we had to pull back, and then we went higher, and then we had to pull back, and we went higher, and we had to pull back, and we went higher. And then we got red and falling in the picture. Took us back down. Remember last night, it didn't make it down to the zone. But here you can see we spent hours consolidating at the zone. When price drops to a zone, we expect support. When price rallies up to a zone, we expect resistance. Now, because red and falling's in the picture, Although price is way above it, you got the BBC here. This really isn't a long trade you'd take. The one you would take would be this one. You got blue and climbing. Price, this candle opened above the BBC. And so 102.95 up to 103.50. Uh, it's about $600 per contract traded in this 30-minute candle. So I know everybody wants to, you know, earn the right to trade 10 contracts, but you know, there's money to be made in these markets right now. If you're, if you earn the right to trade one, according to the 2420 blueprint, you need to put together 10 consecutive days in a row where you reach your goal in SIM and 10 trades or less. Once you do that, the blueprint gives you the green light to go live with one contract. Then, once you're live, your goal is to increase your account balance by $2,000. Which could have happened on one of those candles I showed you a minute ago. I mean, here's a $600 move here. Once you've increased your account balance by $2,000, the blueprint's going to give you the green light to add a second contract. Now, that's a big deal. Because your first contract is underwritten with your startup money. But the second contract, the third, the fourth, the fifth, the tenth, 
however big you want to go, is underwritten with profit you earned from your trading business. And when you go from one to two contracts, it doubles the value. Like two points on the S&P is 100 bucks with one contract. But once you're in the right to trade two contracts, those same two points are worth 200 bucks. And at 10 contracts, it's worth a grand. And a grand a day, based on how many trading days there are in a year, well, it's about a quarter million dollars. Well, gee, why doesn't everybody do it? Because it's not easy. Trading is not easy. But it can be simple. We've worked hard for many years, right in front of you, doing everything in our power to make it as simple as possible possible okay but our our brain our little rat brains want to complicate things sometimes we have difficulty accepting the simplicity because you hear me say the same things over and over day after day how the blowback held and the drop to the zone held, all, all the stuff the underlying principles upon which our strategy and methodology is based It never changes because it's based on the underlying principle of how markets work. And that's all markets. The futures market, the stock market, the forex market, the crypto market. And every market inside each and every one of those that I just mentioned. Whether it's crude oil or gold or silver. Whether it's the euro whether it's Apple stock or Google stock or Pfizer. All markets follow a basic model. Price goes from support to resistance, back to support, back to resistance, over and over again and again. Once your chart and our indicators and our zones show you that the market has found support, you know that price is going to go look for resistance. And our indicators show you where price is most likely to find resistance. Right here, price dropped to the zone and found support. So what's it going to do now? It's going to go look for resistance. It could have found resistance at red and falling. Could have found resistance at the step line. Found resistance at the BBC. That would be a counter trend trade. Just making the point okay all right goal no triggers on the long side for goal uh, our first drop and i believe this candle continued down so the first drop from 34 took us to 27.2 680 dollars per contract traded and back above the trigger, another drop. This one dropped to, we'll call it 1932. It's 31.4. It's $200 per contract traded. And we get back above the trigger, drop again. This time we drop $350 per contract traded. But not all triggers are created equal because blue and climbing has crept into the picture and we don't want to short into what we expect to be support and it was support it walked price all the way up to where again you know that's really not the CFMA1, which I call blue and climbing, red and falling, it came right up to the BVC and rolled over. I was going to highlight it as a bullish cross. But it, but it really wasn't, so I'm going to unhighlight it. That's where I was headed until I adjusted my glasses and looked a little closer. You know, it, you could argue it did get on the other side of the BBC and then give you a bearish cross, but 
that's too fine a detail to worry about because there's just too much opportunity around. So then we come over here. Remember, these weren't good triggers. But once we have red and falling back in the picture and once price gets back below the BBC, uh, this last one here dropped to 1927 $700 per contract traded. Okay, silver. Silver had a little tiny trigger of two pennies. No. Yeah. Yeah. Two pennies, 100 bucks on the long side. On the short side, Twenty-five thirteen. We dropped to twenty-five oh five, twenty-five oh six. So that's seven pennies, three hundred and fifty dollars per contract traded. Back above the trigger, again. Back above the trigger, again. Back above the trigger, again. It's another three hundred and fifty dollar per contract move right there. And that leaves just the euro. Short trigger, target. That little trigger on the long side early on the early going last night, I brought out uh, a tool you could use to calculate profit on the euro. Uh, it's at investing.com. It's free. It's available to anyone. And that was, I think, a $130, $135 move. Then the short side, from the trigger to the published target. See how price dropped right to the zone. It bounced up to the BBC. It got on the other side of the BBC and now the pullback to the BBC. Does it hold or does it not? We got blue and climbing as support. So I would say there's a potential probability that we might rally back up to basically where the market opened last night. But we went from zone to zone. And that's it. Let's go to our good word for the day. Matthew 5.13 says, you are the salt, you are the light. Let me ask you a question. Do the people you work with know that you are a follower of Christ? What do they think of your attitude toward those in authority? How about the people who work under you? Are you critical or complimentary towards them? How's your timekeeping? Do you arrive to work on time and give 100%? Do you demonstrate a commitment to personal growth and excellence on the job? And on, in other words, on the job, are you making Jesus look good? When you begin to think seriously about it, the eternal destiny of some of the people you work with may be riding on your performance. Right now, they may not be too interested in what you have to say when it comes to the things of God. But all of that can change in an instant. When people face a crisis in life like death, divorce, sickness, unemployment, they want someone with real answers. That's when they seek out the boys they threw into the fiery furnace and the lion's den because nobody else around them has answers that work. Jesus said, you are the earth's salt. But if the salt should become tasteless, what can make it salt again? It is completely useless and can only be thrown out and stamped underfoot. You are the world's light. It is impossible to hide a town built on the top of a hill. Men do not light a lamp and put it under a bucket. They put it on a lampstand and it gives light for everybody. Let your light shine like that in the sight of men. Let them see the good things you do and praise your Father in heaven. 
That's Matthew 5, 13 through 16. Somebody is watching you every minute of the day. And I'm not talking about Big Brother. I'm talking about your spouse. I'm talking about your children. I'm talking about your grandchildren. I'm talking about your co-workers. I'm talking about your neighbor. They know what you say. But talk sheep. They're watching to see if you l actually live out the life you talk about. How do you behave under pressure? <coughs> These types of things. God's always watching too. That's our good word for the day. Thanks so much for tuning in. Wherever you are, wherever you are, may God continue to richly bless you with his mercy and with his grace. And I'll see you at the bell. Remember this, there is no greater return on investment than to see a human life changed and given hope. As always, pray hard and trade safe. Any financial information discussed on this show is simply the opinion of our host, Dwayne Reeves, his co-hosts, and guests. To learn more about trading e-mini futures or to take a one-week free trial in our live trading room, call 1-866-928-3310. 866-928-3310. Information discussed on this radio program should not be construed as a recommendation to buy or sell any security. Always do your own due diligence and consult with a licensed securities broker or financial planner before making any investment decision. 